Alright, this morning we're going to listen to what the pros have to say. All right, the prophecy pros, the experts, the scholars. Let's listen to what they have to say about this idea of a millennial kingdom that's not found anywhere in the Bible. And I'll show you, if it's not in Revelation 20, it's not anywhere at all really quickly they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years they shall be priest of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years right now we are priest of God we are a royal priesthood but let's listen to what these guys say Dr. Andy Woods and you many of you probably already Dr. Andy Woods he's an expert know who Andy is, but if you don't, I'll just let you know that he is the pastor of Sugarland Bible Church in, of course, Sugarland, Texas, and uh, Andy's a great friend of us personally, but also of the Prophecy Pros podcast, because we, uh, we've talked about him in the past, And but Andy's authored a number of books. He's pastor for many years. Uh, he's the president of Chafer Theological... And doctor, president, pastor, this guy is an expert and authority on the Word of God, I guess. Seminary. Did I say that right, Andy? You sure did, okay. yeah. Okay, good, Greg. We'll make sure I got the, the name right and so, didn't butcher <laughs> that. Uh, but he's an eminent scholar, and uh, he obviously... <laughs> eminent scholar. I mean, this guy's got it all. ...has a huge following across the, the nation and the world, and we're just glad to have Andy on the program today. Andy, welcome to the Prophecy Pros Podcast. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're going to jump right into our topic today, Todd. Yeah. We're going to talk about the Millennial Kingdom and Todd, from our listeners and, and really others that, that have kind of jumped on the Prophecy Pros train, what might be a first question that people would have for Dr. Andy Woods about the Millennial Kingdom? Let's just start from the basics. Yeah, start with the basics. Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners who have, are new to eschatology and have never studied it before, many of them are... Some yeah, a lot of them never studied it. They're going to be fooled by what these guys say. If you're not reading the Bible you're not going to know what the Bible says, so you're going to be easily manipulated by these guys. Guarantee it. Surprised to hear that we talk about a literal future kingdom where Jesus reigns from Jerusalem. So, so that's not in the Bible anywhere. Old Testament, New Testament, nowhere at all. You'll see. Uh, and they're somewhat familiar with other views like amillennialism, which believes there is really no millennium. So, so let's start there. Where is it we get from Scripture, or why is it that we teach that there's a... Where is it we get in Scripture? It's not in Scripture. Or why is it that we teach this? There we go. Now we got some. A literal future kingdom that's going to be here on earth before the eternal state, when we get to be in heaven. Before the eternal state. So, just so that you're clear, what these guys are teaching is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven... It is not the end of the world. Now, they won't come out and tell you, but what they're saying is that Jesus Christ is a liar and that the end of the world does not occur when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And if you're not saved right now, you can wait until after the end of the world to be saved. Okay? <clears throat> this is why I say it's pure wickedness, because it's not true at all. In heaven with the Lord well, forever. I think the mistake people make is they run to Revelation 20 the first place they go and by my way of thinking Revelation 20 is just kind of the summation it just adds a detail it's going to be a thousand years but um, I have a book in my library boom there it is but I got a book and this book will tell you the truth you can't you make a mistake if you go to Revelation 20 and you read that it's not Jesus reigning a thousand years, it's not us reigning a thousand years, it's we living and reigning with Christ during this time that we're living right now. Very simple. All right, you're not finding anybody reigning. I'm not reigning by, you know, by myself, right? Jesus Christ doesn't reign for a thousand years. He reigns forever. I showed that to you uh, over and over constantly in Luke chapter 1 verse 33 and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever that's not a thousand years fellas 
that's forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end that's not a thousand years all right so again we are a royal priesthood right now and we live and reign with Christ right now how can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now by a guy named uh, Nathaniel West written in like 1890 something and I love the title of the book it's called the thousand years in both testaments mm. Meaning the doctrine. Meaning, meaning, uh, he's making stuff up because there's not anything at all that implies a thousand years in the Old Testament. And clearly, the scripture says Jesus Christ is from everlasting, he reigns forever. The doctrine of the millennium, meaning thousand year reign of Christ, starts real early. I would start it in Genesis 1 where you know God the Father was governing the first Adam and along with his wife they were governing creation for God and you know we know how things went there when they started listening to creation Genesis 3 and that's how God's kingdom was usurped um, and so the goal of history is to restore what was lost in Eden and so by the time you get to Revelation 20, what, you, what you'll discover is God the Father will, will govern not the first Adam, but the last Adam, Jesus Christ, who will... Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, okay? So what he just said, God governs God. Man, maybe I'm making a big deal out of it along with his wife in this case the wife not being Eve but the church you know will govern creation again you know on behalf of God the Father so the whole goal of scripture is how that structure gets um, you know gets restored to planet earth one day and so you planet earth uh. <laughs> you have to have a special place in time for that structure to come back over this planet because as I planet, what planet? Where are you finding that in the Bible? I understand the eternal state. That's a new creation entirely. So it's gonna. This creation is gonna be dissolved by fire. Only after the structure in Genesis one, you know, gets restored. And if you don't have that increment somewhere in your understanding of the end, then God is a loser. So, did he just say God is a loser? Okay, so if we see here that uh, in the beginning God created the light, and he saw that the light was good, and that was the first day. <clears throat> Alright, just bear with me here because. I want to consider what he's saying. And it's interesting, isn't it, that there was day and there was night. There was days and nights before there was the sun and the moon. Alright, so let's go back up here. Where am I at here? I'm just uh, considering here. Two great lights, the great greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. Okay, alright, so, um, that's alright. I won't contest. I won't contest. I'm not going to contest what he's saying. Okay. I'm not going to contest what he's saying. Sir, God has to restore what was lost in Eden. So the rest of the scripture just kind of fills in the details about what that kingdom is going to be like, you know. And uh, But I would just say it's a restoration of what was lost in Genesis 1. Revelation 20 just adds a detail. Oh, by the way, it's going to be a thousand years. 
<laughs> oh, by the way, you only have everlasting life last a thousand years. And then Jesus Christ, he stops reigning. And then uh, Dr. Andy Woods takes over, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, why don't they ever talk about who takes over when Jesus stops reigning? I don't know why they don't talk about that. So, so the general concept of the millennial kingdom is that God restores his, his official, literal rule upon the earth. Yeah, but it's only for a thousand years and then I take over, Jack. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. God, God is just uh, looking at Genesis one. God the Father ruling over the first Adam, along with his wife, governing creation. You know, Satan by taking the form of a talking snake in Genesis three usurped, or he perverted, I guess, the design where he got our forebears to listen to creation. <clears throat> right. That's right. Forebears. Adam and Eve. All right, it's interesting here. He said unto the woman, "Yeah, has God said?" Question mark. Getting Eve to doubt the word of God. All right, and isn't that interesting? And also in Second Corinthians we read, "But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety." so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, go back here. I think I laid it out very simple. We reign with Christ right now. We live and reign with Christ right now. We are a royal priesthood, priests of God. We are called to preach to every creature the gospel. All right? And the second death has no power over us right now that are born of God. And then after uh, this thousand year period, we this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is the end of the world. And we are lifted up. We are changed in a moment. We are changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right this is when we are up in the air and then our enemy is gathered at our feet all right and so they are gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. Of course, we can go back to Genesis 3 and see here in verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Right? So, this is when we are up in the air, and Jesus stomps his heel on the head of the serpent. All right, and this is the end of the world. The end of the world. And just as we read all throughout the Bible, and the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? <clears throat> and I'm going to get this all over, all over the Bible. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Alright, so we're up in the air and our enemies gathered at our feet and they are destroyed forever. Let's see uh, one more verse here. Let's see if we can find it. Oh. I think I have to do this. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. This happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and he makes everything new. There is no more death after our enemy at our feet is destroyed over. This is consistent all throughout 
the Bible. All right, again, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, um, in this parable it says, let them both grow together until the harvest. The harvest is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels are the reapers and they they will gather together the unsaved and burn them and then those of us that are saved we are gathered up in his barn so first we are lifted up to be, meet the Lord in the air our enemy is gathered at our feet and they are burned fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all these are not separate events these are all the same events described many different ways there is no you know thousand year period at this it, it's not consistent it's not logical it sells books but there is no more second chances for the unsaved that's very important also there is no more death and also it's important there is no more sex all right we go to first John chapter 2 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he who but he that doeth the will of God abides forever All right, and the will of God is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ God is not willing that any should perish right so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world no more sex no more of the world at all it's the end of the world unless you listen to these guys the experts and rebel against God and that's this is how Satan became the prince and power of the air so the goal of history is re retaining what was what was lost and I, I don't know I just I'm kind of a simplistic thinker in a lot of ways but I think the millennial kingdom is just as as simple as that I think we get see there, he that makes no mention at all of any Bible scripture whatsoever and I'm looking at this and I keep going back to it and it doesn't change it says they lived and reigned with Christ and we are you seeing right now you don't live and reign you don't reign with Christ right now Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now are you saying that the second death has power over you right now are you saying you are not a priest of God and of Christ right now I mean you can't justify that it really caught up in a lot of details that are fascinating but it's easy to lose sight of the big picture you know God is gonna win this thing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he can't win unless he restores yeah. authority over his uh, choice representative who would be Jesus the last Adam over this planet I love what you said about uh, it's really the simpler view because most people would say the opposite it's too complex why would it's simpler to believe that there's a thousand year period of vanity right you didn't explain anything at all any reason any purpose for a thousand year period after the return of Jesus I want people to talk about or think about what, what is what's going on here Jesus comes in clouds of heaven we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we are lifted up the Bible's very clear on that and we put on this immortality right the Bible's very clear about that so there's a thousand year period what where where's that at in the Bible where there's a thousand years before what and he actually said well I don't want to go back to it that there was this uh, thousand years of peace and you've heard other people say a thousand years of peace okay 
that's wrong. That's not in Revelation 20. That's not anywhere in the Bible at all. But what happens when there's no more peace? I mean, we're putting our hope in everlasting life, but you're claiming it's only a thousand years of peace. What happens afterwards? Just these these people do not ever give enough information on the oh, BS yeah, I need that this they kingdom saw. and all this stuff, but I think a lot of that comes because they haven't read the Old Testament, the the many prophecies and the prophets and even the Psalms and like you well, said, just name one the Psalms, the old, the old Testament, and this and that and whatever else and so on and so forth and etc cetera, etc cetera, and this and that, but there's nothing, not a doggone thing. Said even Genesis one that this is a major theme from the beginning of Scripture. It's not the major theme in Genesis one of a thousand year period is not there, fellas. It's not there. It's that's an incredible statement to make. You're not finding a thousand year period in Genesis one, I guarantee it. It's not something that's just new introduced with, you know, premillennialism and, and our beliefs and a pre trib rapture and a and a, and a pre trib I mean a premillennial return of Christ and that kind of thing. That kind of thing, pre trib, pre rib, pre rib, pre rib, pre rot and that sort of thing. Come on, man. Um, but like you said, in Genesis 1, God was, he, he tasked Adam and Eve with extending his rule. Be, you know, be fruitful and multiply, subdue the earth. So in some senses, each phase through biblical history, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been God just wants his rule to be extended. And, and, and he's kind of showing us in each age and in each turn. In each age. So this is an indication that he is a dispensationalist. Now, are these guys Mormons? We can't do it on our own, and he's he's got to come back and do it himself. And he's gonna. And I love that you said he also that he's a god of restoration. Um, so, in what ways in the millennial kingdom will we see the earth and the animal kingdom and even the government itself kind of restored to that original Edenic state? Right. Well, one thing, if I could just interject this, I want to be real clear on, because when people hear our view, they think we're saying God doesn't have authority now. And <laughs> that's, that's what you're implying, man. Come on. Um, it, it really relates to a distinction between the universal kingdom and the theocratic kingdom. The what? i got to look up these words here. Yeah, and this is so much simple. This is so easy. Making it simple. And what do you say? Authority now. And um, it, it really relates to a distinction between the universal kingdom and the theocratic kingdom. I have no idea what he's talking about. No idea. Theocratical? I don't even know what that word means. Universal kingdom, God is always in control 100% of the time. So that, that was never challenged. What was challenged in Genesis 3 was the theocratic kingdom where God rules through a representative, uh, the first Adam. And Adam and Eve's rebellion caused that theocratic arrangement to be lost. All <clears throat> Relating or denoting a system of government in which priests rule in the name of God or a god. I still don't know what he's talking about. Although God is always in control, um, what was lost in Eden was the theocratic kingdom, you know, where God rules through a representative. And the goal of history is, is seeing that restored one day. And the only place that really fit what say that again kingdom you know where god rules through a representative and the goal of history is is seeing that restored one day and the only place that really fits is in the millennium because by the time you get to the eternal state you don't you're as far as i understand it you don't you're not dealing with this earth anymore you're Alright, this is driving me crazy. Alright, so 
let's just take a look in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at this here we go let's get down here at the last trump that's the end of the world at the last trump the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible now let's go to Matthew 24 so this is driving me crazy I gotta show it to you I can't wait no longer and that he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet <clears throat> this is the end of the world we are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we are changed at the last trump. Right, we are gathered together, we are lifted up to be with Christ, and of course, make no mistake about it, this is the end of the world. So what's he talking about? You're, you're dealing with a new earth, and so Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena where he was seemingly defeated. with this earth anymore you're, you're dealing with a new earth and so Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena where he was seemingly defeated you're not to the end of need I miss some and was the theocratic kingdom you know where God rules through a representative and the goal of history is, is seeing that restored one day and the only place it really fits is in the millennium because by the time you get to the eternal state you don't you're as far as I understand it you know you're not dealing with this earth anymore you're, you're dealing with a new earth and so Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena where he was seen uh, well, wait a restored second. one day and the only place it really fits is in the millennium at um, what was lost in Eden was the theocratic kingdom you know where God rules through a representative and the goal of history is, is seeing that restored one day. And the only place it really fits is in the millennium, because by the time you get to the eternal state, you don't, you're, as far as I understand. As far as I understand, what are you talking about? As far as I understand. Understand it, you know, you're not dealing with this earth anymore. You're, you're dealing with a new earth. And so Jesus has to be triumphant in the Wait a second now. You, you just got done saying. What's he talking about? Is this thousand years after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven or before Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? So if it's after he comes in the clouds of heaven, There's a new earth. <laughs> so, what are you trying to suggest? There's not a new earth after he comes in the clouds of heaven. Does anybody know what he's saying? Does he doesn't even know what he's saying? I guarantee you. In the millennium, because by the time you get to the eternal state, you don't. You're, as far as I understand <laughs> it, you don't. You're not dealing with this earth anymore. You're you're dealing with a new earth, and so Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena where he was seemingly defeated he has to be tri Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena that he was seemingly defeated uh, who what what are you talking about Jesus was defeated what are you talking about man you're the expert Jesus has to be triumphant in the arena where he was seemingly defeated. He has to be triumphant in the arena he was seemingly defeated. Jesus died, defeated death, and rose to life and ascended to heaven and has promised to return for us. He's already defeated death. Now, the marriage is when he returns in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up, all of us that are saved. That's the marriage. And then goes the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus, we already have victory. 
we already have victory. This is just the, the finalization of that victory, the completion of that victory. But, uh, let's see. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You can say, well, that victory hasn't come yet. Well, that victory is already secured. I mean, that's a done deal. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We already have victory when we are born of the Spirit of God. So, when He comes in the clouds of heaven, we are changed in the moment of, in, a, in the twinkling of an eye, we are changed from mortal to immortal and death is done away with forever so maybe I'm making um, a little bit of, I may, maybe I'm making too much of this it makes hmm. a lot of sense yeah, it's yeah. awesome it makes no sense at all hey couple okay I'm gonna give you a <laughs> they don't even follow up I have no idea what the hell this guy just said Let's move on to another subject. A couple of little rapid-fire questions here, and just, you know, you can go as this long as... This guy never explained nothing. You notice that? When it came to Revelation 20, he poo-pooed it and said, the problem is people go to Revelation 20. First thing they do is they go to Revelation 20. Well, I got this book from 1890 that talks about a thousand years. Made no mention of any scripture whatsoever. None. He used words like universalism and and uh, theocratic whatever. I mean, I don't think these you got you had eight minutes, man, to make your point. If you can't make it in eight minutes, you'd have no point. I don't know what these guys are. There, there's something very fishy. These guys aren't ex look at experts. Hey, we're experts. No confusion. All BS. <laughs> I guess I'm not confused. These guys don't know nothing. These guys are the experts. They're the scholars. They're the doctors. They're the pastors. And they don't know anything. They didn't tell you anything at all. Nothing at all. And <clears throat> so let me explain it to you. All right. This is uh, talking about the time period that we're living in now from the time of Jesus to the of, I'm sorry the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return is the thousand years all right we live and reign with Christ right now we are witnesses of God and of Christ right now and sure people are getting their heads cut off even today and there are people who are um, not saved and they do worship the beast and his image and they do have the mark of the beast in their foreheads and in their hands right now people today right now have those things and they are they are unsaved now when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven those people are burned right and make no mistake about it. I, mean, I tell you what drives me nuts is these people, these futurists that say, well, this is going to happen in the future. Well, explain that to Jesus when he comes back and nobody has a tattoo on their forehead. All right. And again, right now, the second death has no power over us that are born of God. We are priests of God and of Christ right now. And I showed that to you earlier All right. first Peter chapter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy na nation a peculiar people which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God right now we are the people of God we are the priest of God we reign with Christ right now. He is in us, and we are in Him. 
right now. So, when this thousand years is, is expired, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up in the air, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, and then our enemy is gathered together at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right. The great white throne and him that sat on it, that's Jesus. That's when he comes in the clouds of heaven. And this is all throughout the Bible. Even in Genesis or in uh, Revelation 1, he says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. This is the end of the world. It's not a beginning of a thousand years. And these people will never tell you the specifics of are people still going to be having sex after Jesus comes? Are people still going to be unsaved after Jesus comes? And then will, do they have a chance to be saved after they're unsaved? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is stupid. It really is. But that's what everybody teaches. All right, so your first mistake you're going to make is you're going to go to Revelation 20. If you're looking for this millennial kingdom, it's not in Revelation 20. Right? So what you do after you go there, after you go to Revelation 20 and you realize it's not there, then you got to go to this guy's book. For theological seminary. Did I say that right, Andy? You sure I did, know. yeah. Okay, good. Great. We'll make sure I got the, the name right and so didn't butcher <laughs> that. Nation uh, of the world. And we're just for having me. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're going to jump right here, listeners, and the first question that people would have for Dr. Andy Woods about the Millennial Kingdom. Let's just start from the basics. Yeah. Start with the basics. Yeah, I think a lot of our listeners who have, are new to eschatology and have never studied it before, many of them are surprised to heat So, uh, and they're somewhat familiar with, are there, where is it we get from Scripture, or why is it that we teach that there's a, a literal future kingdom that's going to be? <clears throat> you remember at the very beginning this guy asked the question where are we getting this thousand year period and we went through six minutes all the way up to the eight minute mark and the only thing he said was the only thing that really was true was that the mistake people make is going to Revelation 20. And the reason that's a mistake is because it's not there. It's going to be here on earth before the eternal state when we get to be in heaven with the Lord Well, forever. I think the mistake people make is they run to Revelation 20 the first place they go. And by my way of... And of course, that's the mistake they make. It's not there. That's, that's why it's a mistake. Thinking in Revelation 20 is just kind of the summation it just adds a detail. It's going to be a thousand years. But um, I have a book in my library. But I got a book. You just don't go to the Bible. He's got a book. This is unbelievable. This is where these people are getting this idea from false teachers. And you don't read the Bible. They're li they're not. They're not reading the Bible because this is not in the Bible at all. And we see this unfolding before our very eyes, evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You saw it firsthand for yourself from the experts, from the pros, from the scholars. They tell you the mistake is going to the Bible and what you need to do is go to their books. That's exactly what he said. All right, And then he went on to talk for six minutes saying nothing at all. It's unbelievable. 